Well, I think part of teaching is the context of the teacher. What experiences, the point of views the teacher can bring to bear. I think I have a unique perspective. I was the fourth of six children born to my mother and father. We were relatively uh, poor. You know, we did not have the modern conveniences of running water or indoor plumbing until I was a teenager. But we always had books. In addition to the World Book Encyclopedias, we got a volume of science books, and I would just immerse myself in those science books. I often look back through those in my home today. When I went to college, I knew I wanted to major in science, and so the first semester, a professor I took for general chemistry, he said that, well, I would suggest you consider majoring in chemistry. And I think of all the things early in my life, that was a turning point, that pivotal moment where I took uh, the road on the right instead of the road on the left. We understand a lot of the chemistry of carbon. We asked ourselves, well, why has it been so difficult to prepare a compound containing a boron-boron double bond when right next door we understand quite well how to prepare molecules with carbon-carbon double bonds? Long story short, we took what we learned with boron and we applied it to silicon. And silicon is a very important element. Every computer chip, our smartphones, our iPads, our computers, the integrated circuits are all silicon based. And so what's happened now, that's opened up a whole new field in inorganic chemistry. And some of those fundamental discoveries are going to be quite striking. If one drills down far enough, the solution to every grand challenge is going to come down to fundamental chemistry, biology, and physics. Chemistry is often referred to as the central science. It is that one science that one needs if one is going to do other science. You have to have some chemistry. I've now been at the University of Georgia 22 years. I could not conduct the research that we do anywhere else.